speaking on that subject, along with a plethora of others, specifically pertaining to Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, USC, LSU, respectively, the top two quarterbacks expected to be taking in the NFL draft. We heard from the great Paul Feinbaum just a few minutes ago. Now we're going to hear a counterpoint from my buddy, the one and only, Dan Orlovsky, NFL analyst extraordinaire, Monday Night Football. Get up. First take. The list goes on and on. Former backup quarterback for the Detroit Lions right here with Stephen A. My man. What's up, Elvis? What's up, Elvis? I, I see. I mean, the, the baseball cap comes off and the Elvis hairdo comes shining well, through. What's going on, Elvis? How you doing, man? You, you, well, first of all, you took the eight seconds to say very kind words about me that I'm thankful for and feel the same way. And then the shots came. Here's, here's, here's the thing, Stephen A. Like, I don't have a great head for hats. Like, I have my ears are I too think big. You do. And when I do. When I wear the hat, it doesn't look great, so I feel like I just look a little bit less bad without a hat on. I think you look fine with it. I think the problem is, so. is that you try to get the, you, you know, you're trying to get the fade on the side and all the crew cut on the side, acting like you're Vanilla Ice. I think that's the problem, <laughs> Dan Olaski. I think that's the problem. I got to keep my hair longer on the sides? <laughs> I think it's a little bit longer. Well, listen, whatever the wife says, whatever the wife says, I know we got some football to talk about, but I want to remind the audience of something I discovered yesterday. Yo, man, it's, it's, I know you had four kids. I yes, didn't sir. know you had triplets. Like, yes, th sir. Th triplets and sons. I, I had no idea. I said, no wonder he's the way he is. No wonder he's so yeah. notoriously cheap. No wonder he'll fly across the ocean and have his wife and coach unless somebody else is paying for it, which is shameful. But it all makes sense now, Dan. It all makes sense. Try, try having a book every time you go on a vacation. Six seats on an airplane. We can't even, we used to, we used to cheat, Stephen A. We used to lie to the hotels so we could get one hotel room when we go to places. Can't do it anymore because the kids are too big. So now we got to get two hotels everywhere we go. I got four kids who play sports and the, the boys are all in sixth grade. So like, as you get older, the sports right. get a gajillion dollars. So right. that's why, man, I just try to penny pinch as but, much but, as but, I can. But why the are you lying? Are expensive. Why are you lying? You're saying we, it's you. The wife <laughs> doesn't do that. You do it all on your own. Yeah. Tell the truth. No, uh, no one, no one likes to spend money like my beautiful wife who is over there. <laughs> she's good at it. Where's she and, at? And, and she's over there. She'll never allow me to put her on camera, Stephen. I, I got you. Do you want to come say hi to Stephen A? She can come. She can come. Tell us she can come. I'll poke your head in and say hi to Stephen A. Come on. Yes, you she won't is. hear it because I have my ear. She'll do it in. for me. Hey, hey, here. hey. How you doing? Well, there hi. she is. There's the lovely wife. There she is. <laughs> the, listen, man. Uh, listen, let me get to some football because I just had yeah. Paul Feinbaum on the show just a few minutes ago. And he's very big. He says there's nothing to think about. Caleb Williams is going to be the number one overall pick. He should be the number one overall pick. And there's nothing to debate. I recall what you said yesterday on First yeah. Take while you were with me. Remind our audience here on the Stephen A. Smith Show over the digital airwaves of YouTube exactly what you had to say in regards yeah. to Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels. It, it, that if I was the Chicago Bears right now, I would take Jaden Daniels out of LSU. The reason why I would take Jaden is I think his ball placement versus man coverage, height, you know, like in the NFL, guys aren't open often. You got you to gotta throw guys – you know, away from defenders or throw the ball away from defenders. I think Jaden does that better and more consistently than Caleb. I think when you look at throwing the football downfield, which is paramount to being really good in the NFL at that position, I think he does that better. And when I say better, I'll say it in this, in this regard, Stephen A, a lot of these young players, their coaches make easy stuff for them that create these chunk throws downfield you know, one, who throws it in some form of rhythm and timing? That's going to matter in the NFL. Number two, who throws it to better spots? And then number three, who has the different types of throws? You've heard me say this. One of the things I hate when people say is he can make all the throws. I don't care. You got to make the right throw at the right time. I think Jaden does that better. And then I think he's got better pocket peace. You know, Caleb has got great pocket feel and his pocket awareness and and ability to get away from stuff is is fantastic. I think Jaden's just balance in the pocket and in the rhythm within the pocket is better than Caleb's. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is not a knock on Caleb. I, th I think Caleb is fantastic as well. Just when I when I watch Jaden and I and I look at the way he throws the football, 
throw wise, just that motion wise, it reminds me of watching CJ Stroud coming out of Ohio State. And again, no knock on Caleb, think he's fantastic. I right now would take Jaden. But if you're going to bring up the CJ Stroud comparison, then obviously that's going to provoke people to bring up Bryce Young because CJ is being paired compared to Bryce Young, who was taken number one overall when CJ was taken number two last year. Now, this year, in all likelihood, it's going to be. Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams going one and two. The discrepancy yeah. that we saw on the field in the rookie years of Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, is that what we could potentially see in your eyes between Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels? No, Stephen A., because I don't think either, let's assume both teams stay as put, Chicago and Washington, who have the one and two pick, I don't believe either of them are as poor surrounding wise as Carolina ended up being but you know Washington's really good on the perimeter with Terry McLaurin who's fantastic and you know um, Jahan Dotson yep. like they have players that are significantly better than Carolina's situation I think Caleb I, I think very highly of Caleb as well this I'm surprised that I got to this point I, I don't think that either of these guys is going to an awful situation I really don't I think if both those teams stay Chicago is in a much better place to absorb a young player with their offensive line and their skill talent. And again, Washington, they may not be, um, you know, the, a, a team that is like ready to take a rookie quarterback and, and vault at, at a really high level. But Washington in many ways has taken second, the, the second pick in the draft for two reasons. Their defense was atrocious last year and Sam Howell ended up throwing a lot of interceptions. And I, I don't know if, you know, this is a football team that is, just so bad that they can't take a young player and give them some chance to play well. You know, while we're on the subject of the Chicago Bears, because they do have the number one overall pick, I got to ask you this question as it pertains to Justin Fields. Uh, because you cover the NFL religiously backwards and forwards. You do Monday Night Football for ESPN sometimes. Obviously, you do a co college games as well. And we know the great work you do on First Take, Get Up, NFL Live, the NFL Show and Beyond. Um, Justin Thank Fields, you. where's the ideal landing spot for him? I'm thinking Pittsburgh. Other people are saying Atlanta. Where do you fall in that line of thinking if Justin Fields is to be, is to be moved on from, from the Chicago Bears? Yeah, I would say Atlanta. Um, the, the best place for Justin is Atlanta. A, a couple reasons why specifically to Atlanta. One, Atlanta's got a good offensive line when it comes to run game. You know, with their new offensive coordinator, Zach Robinson, who comes from his time with Sean McVay, Atlanta can run that offense that he, he kind of grew up in with the Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, Sean McVay tree. That matters with quarterbacks, right? The ability to run the football and then the ability to protect them. Number two, I, I personally believe Drake London is a star in the making at wide receiver if he gets consistent and competent quarterback play. So you absolutely have a bon bona fide number one wide receiver. I think Kyle Pitts, if he's healthy, can still be a good player. He hasn't lived up to that billing. And I think Justin's skill set is you know, ideal for that offense when it comes to you want play action, you want to allow him to get onto the, on the move, maybe not as many quick throws because Justin's release is a little bit longer. It takes time. He's not this quick kind of like shortstop type of quarterback. Um, I was disappointed with the way that the quarterback play was in Atlanta under Arthur Smith last year. I was disappointed with the way they, that they used some of their talent, obviously Bijan being Atlanta as well. So, you know, I'm a Justin guy, Stephen. I think the two things that teams – you know, and we have to ask, and, and they're unknowns, but teams have to figure out for Justin is this, Stephen A. Number one, I don't care what anyone says, doubt. You know, he, 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 there's it's natural as you go, you know, any top of profession, when, when you struggle, specifically when you're young, naturally you're going to think like, am I really good? I don't care what gets said publicly by okay. the player. Doubt, doubt is real. You know, you, you ask yourself, like, can I, can I really play, you know? And then the second thing is, this will be his third offense having to learn in four years. So whatever team acquires him, assuming he gets traded, you got to be really comfortable knowing that not only can he come in and quickly learn the offense, he's going to have to come and learn, and you're hoping be able to go play at a high level very quickly because you're going to have really a one-year opportunity to see, do we pick up a fifth-year option? Do we sign him to a contract extension? And that's those are questions that they got to figure out. 
I just finished a few minutes ago talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I don't want to hear a damn word about Kenny Pickett. You can't have yeah. Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and Deshaun Watson 100%. in the same division, and you're going to come back and start the 2024 NFL season with Kenny Pickett at the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That cannot happen. I got a choice between Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, or a Kirk Cousins coming off in an Achilles injury. Who should I go with looking at the Steelers roster, Dan Olofsky? Uh, number one would be Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins has Off of been an a, Achilles injury? Yeah, you know, I, I know the Achilles injury is, you know, part of it, Stephen A., but what, what would you rather have? A known – you know Kirk Cousins is a good player. We know he's that. He's a good player. Okay, we, we know he's a good player. He's had moments of really good football. He's had moments of just okay – but more often, you like, you can go to the bank. He's going to be good. Here's the thing, Stephen A., you don't get good – at that position right now in the league, when you are strictly a pocket passer, if you don't obsess about the small things and the details, that's mm. why the injury doesn't concern Good me. Good point. Because, you know, he, I, I have full belief that Kirk is going to come back completely healthy and the version that he was before the injury because he's obsessed with the small details and the little things that matter because that's how he plays the game. And so I, I like, I, I don't look at Kirk as it, you know, the guy coming off of the AC or the, uh, the Achilles injury. I just look at him as Kirk. And so by far it would be Kirk cousins for me. I think Russell Wilson gets a bad reputation. I believe Russell was top 10 or top 12 in the NFL for most of the year last year. You got to know what you're getting yourself into personality wise. I don't know Russell like that. So I can't speak to it. I can just, observe what gets said about him he comes obviously with a lot of conversation and so i don't you, you got to be very comfortable absorbing that if you're the chicago or the pittsburgh steelers uh but justin would very much be in the conversation for me as well but if it was you know i had to pick one kirk cousins easily before i let you get on out of here last question drake may uh made some news because um you've had various analysts uh pointing out questions about him and how legitimate he would be as a top pick, not number one or two, but as a top pick in the NFL draft coming out of North Carolina this year, he completed 63% of his passes, threw for over 3,600 yards, 24 touchdowns, just nine interceptions. But there's a lot of question marks about him. Merrill Hodge, for example, my former, our former colleague at ESPN, who's an outstanding football analyst, certainly threw out his question marks. What are your thoughts about Drake May and, and the kind of player he's going to be on the next level? I don't care where you Drake may you have to, where you where you take Drake may Stephen A. I do not care where you take him. He has to sit for at least a year, mm. at probably two. So if if you told me, okay, if you told me that this team was going to take Drake May, and you were going to sit him for two years, and he was going to work, because here's the thing, Stephen A. His feet are not good, okay. And if you go into the NFL and you don't fix your feet and you don't get them as you know, a consistent part of your game. I don't care who you are. I've watched it for 20 years now. You're going to struggle. I've seen Patrick Mahomes have to work on his feet. I've seen Josh Allen have to work on his feet. I've seen Lamar Jackson have to work on his feet. If you don't work on your feet and fix them, I don't care how talented you are, you struggle. It, you can't work on your feet while also having to worry about winning games on Sunday. It doesn't happen that that easily in the NFL. So I, I don't care where you draft them. If, if you told me that um, – that the Chicago Bears were going to, you know, um, keep Justin Fields for a year and draft Jake May or Drake May, I, I, not going to happen, but I would be okay with that. If you told me that Washington was going to start Jacoby Brissett and keep and draft Drake May and they were going to sit him like Green Bay did with Jordan Love, that's for me, that's what it is, Stephen A. He has to mm -hmm. follow the Jordan Love model. If he follows the Jordan Love model, He's got a chance to be a tremendous you know, player in the NFL. Last question for you, and I really appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you so much about this. I'm very, very serious about this subject right here. I just spoke about it a minute ago. McCole Hardman and news emanating out of Jets camp that this guy may have leaked game plans to the opposition. Um, he obviously played for me when I was host, you know, coaching the Celebrity All-Star Game for yeah. All-Star Week of ESPN. But it's no laughing matter. I can't think of anything that I've heard of a player potentially doing that is more egregious than that. It's so egregious, in fact, that I, I said, you got to come out today and you got to debunk that noise. You can't have anybody thinking that you were playing for a team and literally giving a game plan to the opposition. To me, that warrants banishment. That's how serious that is for me. But I didn't play in the NFL. You did. 
along with guys like Lewis Riddick and, 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 and Damian Woody and others who I spoke about it with this morning. Your thoughts on that story real quick. Yeah, I thought you guys were tremendous on first today take today when you guys talked about it. Stephen A., the most um, sanctified place that I've ever been in my 40 years on planet Earth and obviously in my athletic career is the locker room. And once you, as an athlete, do something to betray the trust of that locker room, if that's the case by Nicole Hardman, that's a problem. And I completely agree with you. When you said it this morning, I was watching to my left and I said, he's dead right. If that is not true, he 100% needs to come out and protect his name and say that that is not true. Because once you cross that line, I know you got teammates and you've, you've had brothers and whatnot and you've been through some stuff. And, but once you cross that line and you lose that trust in a locker room, it's difficult if, to be ever looked at right. the same, if ever, you know. So I, I completely agree. If that's not the, if that's not the case, he needs to come out and protect his and name. We ain't talking about you talking to the media and you frustrated with a particular player or coach or whatever, and you giving yeah. some off the record comments or something like that. That happens in every locker room. I'm talking right. about a game plan, and you literally are jeopardizing guys wearing the same uniform and sharing the same locker room with you and yeah. giving that intel to the opposition. I don't think it gets any any more egregious than that. Yeah. That's unforgivable. Yeah. I really don't yeah, believe he did it, and I'm praying that I'm right, that he didn't yeah, do such I, a thing. I, I agree, Stephen. Sometimes what you'll see, and we know this, you'll see a guy that plays for X team, and then he goes to you know a rival the next year, whether free agency or trade or, or, or he's just picked up, and you'll share things about that team. You'll share secrets right. about – that offense, hey, when they get into this formation and they use this verbiage, this is what they want to try to get to or whatnot. That's the you know kind of the nature of the business. But but that that's like that that's not crossing the line and doing something that is almost unforgivable. If he did that, it feels like something that he needs to come out and address very very uh, very quickly. And, and so um, I'd be surprised if that was the case and I'm disappointed because that locker room is is such a sacred place. Yeah. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much Love for taking too, time out of your, big, your busy schedule. Do me a favor. It's Friday night. You know, you got about an eight, nine hundred percent raise from what you were making a couple of years ago. I kind of know these things, okay? Take your <laughs> wife out. You know, you can hire a babysitter, okay? Take the wife out for a nice, beautiful dinner on a Friday night, man. I think she deserves that. You got in your workout, you were in the gym and all that stuff. Man, just, just, just stop being so damn cheap. That's my only issue with you. You're too damn cheap. Well, I, I'd say this. First of all, I say this in all seriousness. I, I appreciate everything you've done for me, Stephen. You've been great to me and my family and, and obviously for my career. I, I say that in, in total honesty. So I, I thank you and I love you for that. Um, I, I can't take her out tonight, Stephen A. We're going to hang out with some friends. Um, but here's the thing. In two weeks, her birthday. Two weeks is her birthday. So I'm, I'm throwing a little, little like, shindig for her and her, you know, friends on, on Friday night. The 15th You're paying her for birthday's it? Mark. I'm paying for it. We're fronting the bill. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So... We got we got something in the uh, something in the works. Oh my lord! It's yeah. breaking news! It's breaking news! You yeah. gonna pay for it? Oh, I'm gonna pay for it. Now, I would say I'm touched by that, but I remember when you said you were gonna pay for the flight, and then you found coupons. <laughs> I remember you did that. So you called them coupons. I'll be, I'll be checking back with you in a couple of weeks, man. I'll be checking back with you in a couple of weeks. March 15th. So uh, right. that's she's got something to look forward to. You know? All right. I Love actually, you, bro. I sent, I sent out a text to everybody that I invited. I said, no need for a gift, parenthesis, she has me, parenthesis. Wow. Oh, so you're depriving her of gifts. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Dan. It doesn't get it. It is it, unbelievable, man. Goodbye, man. Bye. Appreciate you, Bye. boss. All right, bro.